I mean, I've never heard of anybody having 12 heart attacks. W was it all at, were they all at the same time? Well, consecutively, yes. Um, one after the other over a period of about seven months, I think. Right. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Alan at Motor on Beep Beep. And today I've come to find the final resting place of Brian Connolly of the supergroup The Sweet. And of course, The Sweet were very well known in the 1970s. Blockbuster and uh, Love is Like Oxygen, fantastic group. So we're going to head over there, look. And we're going to find his uh, official plaque and uh, go through his biography. It's going to be a good one. So don't go away. It's a bit of a sad one, my friend. I've got to, I've got to warn you, but it's still an interesting one. Let's go. So Brian was fostered by Jim and Helen McManus. Um, they had a biological son, and that turned out to be the actor who was in Taggart, if you remember the detective programme. Brian never knew for sure who his father was, but there was a great resemblance between the biological son of the McManuses and Brian. So there was a lot of feeling that possibly McManus was the actual father of Brian as well, but that was never proven. And Brian always felt deep inside him quite lonely that he'd never been loved by his proper parents, never known them for sure, never knew his father was for sure. And if you talk to anybody who knew him, including the band members, the first thing they picked up was this emptiness. And I think that's partly what caused him to be so unstable in his real life. Very sad, really. Yep, it really is. People who really knew Brian said that the one thing in his life he really wanted to be was a star. And of course he turned out to be one. Um, it, it cost him a great deal to become that star. But um, that could have been a compensation for the fact that he had this loneliness inside. His own wife said that. Um, he had a driving ambition to be famous. And of course he got there, but of course it, it cost him a great deal in his own personal self, including his health, I think. By 1974 the group was doing quite well and they were, they were destined to back the Who in concert. But unfortunately, poor Brian got beaten up in a, in a disco. Somebody kicked him in the throat and it affected his, uh, his, his actual uh, vocal cords. And uh, on Sweet Fanny Adams, which was the LP that they produced that, that year, a lot of the band had to do the vocals instead of Brian because he just couldn't sing. So not a good start really for Brian in that respect. But we've got some big hits to come very soon. Brian, do join us, old boy. Yeah. Well, you sounded fine voice, but... Um... You've been through the mill, haven't you? I mean, I've never heard of anybody having 12 heart attacks. W was it all at, were they all at the same time? Well, consecutively, yes. Um, one after the other over a period of about seven months, I think. Right. I mean, do you remember them more? No, I don't remember any of them. I was... Uh, I did regain consciousness between them, so they tell me. But most of the time, uh, was... My mind's a blank. Right. And, and did they say what had caused them? Or was it a genetic problem? Well, that was a combination um, for one reason and another. You know, I was drinking too much. And the drink with the... Um, at the time uh, I was taking, I was prescribed uh, retention tablets that were a bit too strong for me. And the combination caused the cardiacs. Brian Francis Connolly was born in 1945 in Hamilton, South Lancashire. His mother was a teenage waitress, Francis Connolly, who left him in a Glasgow hospital as an infant while he possibly was suffering from meningitis. The identity of his biological father was never made public. Brian was fostered at the age of two by Jim and Helen McManus of Blythe, South Lancashire, and he took their name. After inadvertently discovering his lineage, he eventually reverted back to his name of Connolly. The McManuses were the family of Mark McManus of Taggart fame on television. Both men perceived a resemblance between them and supposed that McManus's father to have been Connolly's also. In a radio interview, Brian reported that singing was a large part of growing up since there was no television. He was regularly called upon to sing for family and friends. Brian also credited the Everly Brothers as being his earliest musical influence. Mick Tucker, 
Brian Connolly, Frank Toppy and Steve Priest named their new band The Sweet Shop. But on the release of their first single, Slow Motion, in July 1968, the band shortened the name to the one we all know now, The Sweet. They recorded a further three unsuccessful singles. Andy Scott joined the lineup in late 1970, just before the release of their first hit single, Funny Funny. After this, Connolly was propelled into the limelight with the other members of the suite, with many appearances on Top of the Pops. As time progressed, issues between Brian and the other members of the suite developed, and he would find the band were excluding him from the decisions. Brian developed a significant problem with alcoholism in the mid-1970s. During 1977, when no tours were undertaken and two of the suite's most successful albums were recorded, the power struggle within the band became more apparent. Brian's chronic alcoholism abuse further comprised his role within the band and his voice began to show the impact in recordings and on the stage during Sweet's 1978 US tour. He played his last British show with the classic lineup of the suite at the Hammersmith Odeon, London, on the 24th of February, 1978. His final live performance with the band was in July, 1978, in Florida, USA, when they supported Alice Cooper. His departure from the band was not made public until March, 1978. Rather sadly, in 1981, Brian was admitted to hospital with bloating and he sustained multiple heart attacks. His health was permanently affected with some paralysis on his left hand side, which later developed into a nervous system condition. These problems were most likely related to Brian's excessive alcohol consumption and heavy smoking, coupled with the use of prescription diuretic medicine. During January of 1997, sadly Brian had another heart attack and was hospitalised in Slough. After a week in hospital, he discharged himself, but he had to be readmitted the following week. This time there was little more that could be done. Brian very, very sadly died around midnight on the 9th to the 10th of February 1997 due to kidney failure, liver failure and repeated heart attacks. Brian was cremated after a ceremony at most holy named Roman Catholic Church at Old Mill Road, Denham, Buckinghamshire, on the 17th of February 1997, and his ashes were scattered over the water by his daughters, Nicole and Michelle. He was also survived by his ex-wife, Marilyn, and his one-year-old son, Brian, born on the 26th of May 1995, by his girlfriend, Jean. Fans organised a memorial concert for Brian at the Camden Palace in London on the 11th of February 1998. Money was raised for a plaque dedicated to Brian at the Breaksmere Crematorium, Runslip, Middlesex. It was unveiled on the 9th of February 2000. In 2023, Brian's son, Brian Jr., completed the television show The X Factor Brian's mother, Jean, is married and now lives with the former band member, Glenn Williams, in Spain. In 1981, Brian was admitted to hospital and found out he'd had a cardiac arrest. They said that uh, it could cause brain damage and he went on over the next few days to have 13 more. It left a permanent paralysis on his left-hand side. He shook all the time. His health was really badly damaged. It was um, kind of the beginning of the end if you know what I mean his health had, had severely been knocked and he'd never fully recovered from that right we're almost here now it's gone quite quiet so I'm pleased about that all the services have stopped which is nice and we're going to take a little walk up here to find his plaque there's a wall there which I know um, is where his commemorative plaque is so we'll wander in together and find it show you the, the map of the the place there that's it okay let's go in together it's quite a nice plaque I've seen the pictures it's got his picture in the center so hopefully it won't be too hard to find 
got a nice day for it as well. Now, I'm going to spin this round so we can find Brian's commemorative plaque together. I know it's quite a nice looking plaque because it, it's engraved with his picture when he looked his absolute best with the blonde there. And there we go, we found it straight off in the middle. Yeah, that's nice. It's had some fans recently, flowers, a little windmill. And there we go. It's nice, it really is nice. Let's just gently lift that. It says, in lovely memory of Brian Francis Connolly. It's a nice little engraving, isn't it? 5th of October 1945 to the 9th of February 1997. Your music lives on, rest in peace, with love from sweet fans worldwide. Thank you, Brian. Love is like oxygen. Loved all the songs. Really did. It was my era. You were a great singer, a great frontman. And it's a great pleasure to do this tribute to it today. It really is. Thank you, Brian. So he was a superstar, wasn't he? That's what he wanted. Um, so let's be upbeat about that. But uh, you've got to remember one thing, I think, out of this, uh, this story. Brian, he always felt he wasn't loved because of his family not being with him from being birthed and finding out at 18 he was a uh, fostered. And it did affect him, and it gives you a lesson in life to that, doesn't it? That all this admiration from fans, all this uh, stardom that he seeked, didn't didn't give him the thing that most people want, true love. And when we've got our own family and friends, we don't need all that uh, shallow stuff, really. I mean, I'm, I'm a, a fan of many people. I truly am. Um, hence, I get emotional on these videos sometimes. But in reality, it's the people that we genuinely know and love us that matter. No star worshipping can make that up. It cannot make up for that in any shape or form. So on the days when things are so good, turn to the loved ones that you've got, and you've got it all. And, uh, you know, one person that cares for you is worth a thousand that don't really know you, or if not more than that, really. So I think that's a lesson we get from Brian's story. He should have lived a longer life. He was a, a good-looking man with talent and uh, money, so he could, have, he could have had it all, and he... Unfortunately, through alcoholism and all that pressure that he felt, he put himself under. So that's our lesson today. <sighs> Let's smell the fresh air and relax a bit. That's what it's all about. And cultivate friends and family. So don't forget to subscribe and dig the bell so you don't miss future videos. And I do love the comments. I truly do. I read them every day on my phone now. It's great. You all get to know each other. And the things you learn is fantastic. It's the best bit about the channel, is that, really. I'm loving it, and uh, I want you all to think of it. It's your channel too, because it really is. So from me, Alan, I look forward to seeing you all very soon. I look forward to your comments. Thank you, everyone. Take care. See you on the next one soon. Bye.